Hi, welcome to our Metal Reactions channel. I'm Brad. I'm Alone. A quick plug for Shane Capazorio who did the channel branding and the intro video. So if you need some graphic design work done for yourself, you can find his contact details in the description below. Um, so today we are doing Orphan Land, The Cave. Um, this was part of our tier two patron requests. So this is Boris Feltman's request. Um, if you'd like uh, us to react to a song of your choosing, you can also do so on Patreon and you can find the link to that in the description below. So I don't know anything much about this band. I'm assuming you don't either. Um, all Boris said is that they're an Israeli band. Oh, okay. And that's about it. Is it important information? <laughs> I don't know. May or may not be. All let's, right. Let's see. Mm-hmm. from Aladdin or something. <laughs> it feels very dancey. Like, you want to go <laughs> dance to that. Okay, or so just sing along. Evidently, it was important that they were from Israel. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was crucial piece of information. 
uh, which I think would be still uh, something you could learn from the first <laughs> few seconds of, of the song. Yeah, the the first thing that comes to mind with instrumentally but also vocally is Surge from um, System of a Down. So most oh, yeah, that's that's true. Most of the members, I think maybe even all of the members of System of a Down are Armenian. Mm -hmm. So I there's know. okay. Sorry, I'm, <laughs> I'm I'm mansplaining then. Yeah, <laughs> you do that. <laughs> so um, yeah, then it 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 seems there's some commonality there. I actually before this, I'd never tweaked that that sound I was hearing in System of a Down or Serge's solo stuff. I hadn't really tweaked that that was oriental stuff. I hadn't like consciously made the connection, but now hearing this, it's like, ah, oh, okay. I think it's more like, um, it maybe it's coming from folk tradi mm. traditional songs, mm. like this manner of, of singing. Mm. Um, and at the beginning, I even thought that it was um, when there was this woman um, sort of singing the sounds, not even the words. Mm. It was it sounded like a prayer or or something. Yeah, yeah. But, well, I mean, I think some some heavy relig religious undertones. Yeah, um, we'll, we'll get to the lyrics at the end. I'm um, I'm quite excited for for the first piece because I know what they're talking about in the first piece here. But we'll we'll get there. Let's okay. let's do the lyrics at the end. All right. Let's keep going.
very dynamic. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, it was it was interesting. It sounds very unique from anything that we've heard before. Yeah. Agreed. Um, yeah, I think it's a really uh, well-made combination of um, old sound, of like traditional mm. sound and contemporary. Mm. So there were, I did hear some impressive drumming there and uh, very contemporary sounding guitars. But then um, it seems, uh, I'm guessing maybe they used some like traditional instruments too to, to make that sound because I can't imagine how how else mm. it can be done. Um, yeah, I think the choir also was like fit really well in this because I think the idea was to create sort of this um, um, like a tail um, mm. and uh, basically like to play it in rows and uh, the choir really adds to that mm. you know like a maybe even like a tale a tale for children mm. um, uh, um yeah well yeah, it's it's really impressive yeah i agree there's there's a lot in there like it how how can i put this it on the surface it maybe doesn't seem as complex as it actually is yeah i think because the melody like the the main mm. uh, like the main melody is not that complicated. It it has this very catchy mm. sound, uh, which obviously I like and you not so. <laughs> no, but I, I, I sort of I think because there was all this underlying complexity, like there's there, there were so many layers of of instrumentals and you know choir and, and all these things and as you say traditional instruments, whether it is real instruments, uh, real traditional instruments or it's like you know pedals or synthesized or something like that. I I don't know, but um, either way it doesn't really matter. Um, there's there's just a lot of depth to what's happening and a lot of speed. And as soon as you add speed, then you automatically add a lot of complexity. Um, so even within a relatively simple melody there's still layered a lot of complexity. Um, so yeah, the, the energy of the song is, is something that really stuck out to me. It's, it kept such a such a high tempo pretty much the whole way through, even when it had like like uh, lighter and darker parts. The I think the lighter and darker was introduced more through the, the vocals. So that could be the way that the, like the tones of his voice or like the way he was singing versus a choir and Again, we'll get into the lyrics later, but I, th I think that actually um, was used as storytelling, mm -hmm. the, the different voices for, for different characters in the story. So um, I think they brought in more, although it was high, like fast paced most of the way through, they were still able to like contrast voice more so than tempo, mm -hmm. um, which is really cool. Really, really enjoyable. Um, I had no idea something like this even existed. So. <laughs> yeah, it's very... And, uh, I don't know, unexpected maybe, mm. is the word. No. Um, yeah, so I'm pleasantly surprised. Mm, me too. Mm, yeah, I think someone should definitely make a video to, to this song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> With this, uh, uh, like, dynamism, it will work really well. Mm, that's true. Anything else instrumentally? Or want to get into? I like this oriental sound. Mm. I want to listen more to that. Mm, so. Okay, so lyrically, um, I know what this cave is that they're referring to. Shall, okay. yeah, sh shall go I go for it? Okay. So I remember um, we actually did this in English when I was like maybe 14 or 15. Uh, Pla what a memory. <laughs> <laughs> Plato's Allegory of the Cave. So and let me not mansplain again. Do you know Plato's Allegory of the Cave? Okay, so, I mean, from my 14, 15 year old memory, okay. Plato's Allegory of the Cave is basically, there's a group of people who grow up with their backs to a wall inside mm. a cave, and there's a fire behind them, and that fire, uh, and then there'll be like images or shapes in front of the fire, but behind their back, and so the shadow of those shapes and images is reflected or um, projected in front, on, of. in front of them. And that's all they know. They're chained to the wall. They don't know anything else in the world. So, okay. so for them, their reality is these shapes on the wall. They have no idea that true reality is what's behind them and what's making everything. Mm -hmm. So 
and I, I mean, I'm sure it has more depth and complexity than that, but basically it's a reality versus perception theme of um, like humans accept what they're presented with. And uh, what, or if, if this is all that we know, then this is all that we know. And we accept that as being our reality. We, ex we accept it as being reality in general because it's our reality. Okay. Yeah. So now again, that's, that's a, probably a 14, 15 year old summary of, <laughs> of Plato's Allegory of the Cave. I'm sure it goes into many more intellectually interesting places than that. <laughs> Something got lost along the way, probably. <laughs> Perhaps. But as a, as a baseline backdrop to what this is <laughs> explaining, that, I mean, the whole first stanza, which is quite long, is pretty much that. Um, and then when it goes, I mean, you know, we can go into what it means further, but I think it's basically uh, then goes in to show religion mm -hmm. as being that, you know, um, that we're pre being presented with the reality that we aren't challenging or, or people aren't challenging. Um, so I, I guess we can go line by line because um, it's not super long. Um. Okay, fine with me. So the, the first bit is that which I just explained. So it's in the dark I live without any freedom in life. Those darkened shadows do not deceive. They are all I see and know. This cave is all I breathe. In chains till the day that you die, this crimson fire burns at my back like waves of nothing it flows. Plato's allegory of the cave. But interesting that the perspective is from the person who's in the cave and they're sort of saying like, no, like, this is my reality. I don't want to hear anything else, you know? Mm -hmm. um, then we go into one can easily forgive a child who is afraid of the dark, but one cannot forgive a man who is afraid of the light. And if I remember correctly, that was sung by the choir. Mm -hmm. So I guess that's the, the voice of enlightenment. You know, we've changed character previously to being the person who's in the cave to now being a sort of a, a higher knowing being, uh, you know, giving, giving this wisdom. Um, but, and the light, I suppose, being truth or, you know, true, true reality. I would say it's, it's maybe like the voice of a storyteller. True. So, you know, when, when you tell uh, the story to the mm. kids, that, then it sort of makes a, a pause and says, okay, kids, so here's the moral of that story and mm. what we learn from it, something like that. <laughs> yeah, true. Um, then God's blind death chains dark bravery. Not 100% sure of every word being used in there and why, but the, gen the, the just of it is there. War versus peace, ignorance versus strength, freedom versus slavery, the dreamer must awake. So um, again, I think that's probably talking from another perspective, saying that you know, we all need to awaken from this, this forced reality, this forced perception that, that we have. Um, then it gets interesting. So now I don't know... I think it was pretty interesting before that. It, it was. It was. Okay. Well, when I say interesting, I mean potentially controversial. Okay. Now, I, I don't know this band's uh, religious beliefs or political beliefs or anything like that. Now, the next line is something in what I think is Arabic. And then a line saying, there is no God except Allah. Mm -hmm. And then what looks to me to be Arabic. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> now, if they're Israeli, I'm assuming they're Jewish. So that's why I'm a little, ooh, why are they talking from an Islamic perspective if they're Jewish? I'm hoping this isn't sort of um, anti-Islamic in any way, but it could be, I don't know. So I guess let's let's just take it through from here and we'll, we'll see if we can draw any conclusions. It, it could be a criticism of all religion, it, it, or uh, a criticism of all um, blind blind religion, which, yeah. which is different to religion I don't in general. I think it's a criticism of religion per se, at all. Mm -hmm. I think it's the criticism of people who don't question. Right, right. So when I say blind religion, that's that's what I'm referring to. So my personal hope is that the song takes a direction of criticizing blind religion. But let's let's see where we go. I mean, I mean that as opposed to picking on one religion or another, mm -hmm. because I think all religions are guilty. Or I mean, not say all the religions. All religions have people that are abusing that religion 
the, to benefit themselves or deceiving people through through the means of religion. Okay. Um, okay. So, within a dream, I cannot forsake. All hope has flown away. This dark shall be your friend. Your wish is not my command. Free thought will lead you astray. The brother looks from above. I cannot forsake the brother I love. So that seems to me to be from the, the, the religion is the character now, or if not the religion, perhaps the, um, the, the person abusing religion for their own sort of selfish ends, right? Mm, yeah, I kind of, I don't, I don't remember in the song who was, I think it was some, some lines were sung by the choir and mm. some were from like the personal mm. perspective. So yeah, so I don't remember which were which, <laughs> but it was uh, in, 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 as far as I remember, it sounded like a, a dialogue. Mm. Um, so those lines that were talking about like, uh, many people from like us and, mm. and directing someone so it was probably like from perspective of all people in the cave yeah um, who sort of um, define what <laughs> the stance of, 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 of them are uh, what the stance of them is yeah um, okay and then, then it goes back into the one can easily forgive a child who is afraid of the dark the real tragedy of life is when men are afraid of the light um, now it, again okay I say now it gets interesting it has all been interesting but it gets interesting again the stage is set for me your life is a play that we it was wrote definitely sung by, sung by the choir your life is a play that we wrote hmm interesting I would have thought it would go the other way because this is this part of the story seems to be coming from the antagonist. Mm, why? Well, that, that's because it's okay. The stage is set for me. Your mm -hmm. life is a play that we wrote. The curtain has to rise now. You shall see. This tragedy is the ending we sought. The shadows are dancing upon the wall. The man who has the gift of sight is one with truth and heart. He sees beyond the veil. Okay, no. Now, now it's getting into breaking down the wall. But um, that piece before I thought was sort of from the perspective of the person who's creating the illusion, rather than the per. I guess I was ta I was taking it the as as the antagonist creating the illusion rather than the person uh, telling you to see through the illusion. I don't know what you yeah. mean. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's let's keep going. Um, so, the man who has the gift of sight is one with truth in heart. He sees beyond the veil of life, our cave, he will depart. See, our cave, mm -hmm. meaning the people who created the cave. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking the antagonist. Um, like Icarus, he will fly too high, and for that he must die. Those unsung prophets and dead messiahs will fall. We choose to live in, in this darkened cave, far, far away from the light. Uh, I guess now this is from the perspective of the people who are in the cave and don't want to see the light. Because they're, they're almost like, this, this person has left us, he's left our cave. Um, but we, we don't want to see the light. We just want to remain in our sort of forced illusion, uh, blind to whatever it is that, that we believe in. Okay, yeah. Well, I mean, I think that this last part starting from your life is a play that mm. we wrote. It, it's basically telling... Um, so like those who want everyone to stay in the cave. So mm. they're telling that other story that if you dare to leave the cave, if you dare to uh, reach the light, mm. then you will be punished for that because you're sort of thinking too much of yourself like Icarus did who wanted to who was too proud and wanted to reach the sun um, and it's impossible and for that you will be punished and yeah and that's the way um, that they sort of warn about yeah. all the things that are awaiting outside and it's basically just death and destruction yeah. to, to keep order and conformity yes um, yeah, I mean, overall, it's obviously about this um, imprisoned thought uh, and, uh, well, mi mind control in a way, probably. 
which is also something that is that was sort of edu when people get educated from their early age only into one way of thinking it's probably hard to yeah to uh, get out of that cave you know yeah and especially when you don't know what's outside and mm. all that you've been told is that certain death await awaits you there so I wouldn't even say that it's a it's criticizing someone or something. I would say it's just a bit, you know, sadness towards mm. uh, people like that, and also sort of teaching a lesson um, that the light is is the truth. It's not, um, and, and it's not gonna kill you. <laughs> it's not gonna uh, destroy your life or make you a bad person. Yeah. Uh, or like to think that you're not worthy of it because like you're you lived all your life in the dark and the light is something that you do not deserve um so i think it's like basically exposing all those fears that um could possibly live in people that are um like brought up within this <laughs> I don't know, closed box of thoughts and only can are uh, able to think a certain way. Yeah, so this would probably should ins this probably this song pro sh probably should in inspire them to not be afraid. Mm, that's true. Um, so I was okay, two two parts I, I, I want to just discuss here. So the first one, I, I was wondering what exactly this band's beliefs are like what, what is their intention with the song mm -hmm. um is it you know with um sort of a, is it meant with a positive outlook or is it sort of condemnation or criticism of in particular one religion um thankfully so i, I just open up their their wikipedia page and in the little intro bit it says that their lyrics promote a message of peace and unity particularly between the three main Abrahamic religions, Juda Judaism, Islam, and Christianity. So, <laughs> relief there. Um, it is meant with a positive outcome then, which is good. Um, the second thing is that this, this whole idea, and the reason Plato's Allegory of the Cave stuck out to me so, like, so vividly, even from like an early teenager, I've always loved this idea of reality versus perception. Um, it's one of my favorite themes in, in films. Like pretty much most of my favorite films are in some way or another reality versus perception. These, these films where there's some massive plot twist and everything that you thought was real isn't real. And it can be Memento or Shutter Island or Inception or Interstellar or I mean, there's, there's a whole range of them, Sixth Sense, uh, Fight Club, whatever. Pick, take your pick. There's many of them. Um, I love that theme in general. and. Now here, this, this theme has been used in the context of religion, but it, it can be used in anything. If you look at any political topic, um, you know, you, you can see right now in you know, anywhere in the world, but you know, the US is what comes to mind where people have their entrenched um, parties, like they'll be from an area of a country that is entrenched in being, you know, to follow one party or another. And those, those that party is associated with certain characteristics or beliefs in something, and that can be very, very, you know, widespread of a, you know, what, what the specifics of, of that could be. Um, but it's the same thing, you know, it may not be religion, it can be something else, but that's all you know. If, if you're brought up in, in a society that believes, you know, the vast majority of people believe one thing, um, sometimes correctly, sometimes incorrectly, to, to break free of that, to see, to see through that illusion is difficult for anyone. So I, I agree it, it shouldn't be a criticism of someone. You know, you, you're you born in the situation that you're born into. That's your, your product of your surroundings. And that's the point of Plato's Allegory of the Cave is that we're all just a product of our surroundings. Um, and some people are able to break that cycle or see through um, that to, to become enlightened. And we should all I suppose challenge everything and think to think to think for ourselves basically and it's, it's a lot easier said than done though. 
Yeah, I guess it's something that we heard in the tool song recently. <laughs> yeah, I was actually thinking a lot of a lot of tool with this, and and even um, the the little like the album picture they had a big eye. Yeah, like, like third the, eye. the third eye, yeah. <laughs> seeing seeing through mm. everything. Pretty cool how you know this American band and this Israeli band are from very different contexts, more or less, singing about something similar. Yeah, at least from what I can tell. <laughs> Yeah, but I, I think that this song, the, the cave, it's more, um, it's less abstract and yeah. uh, more <laughs> focused on like, like on images, mm. uh, on on the stories that you can tell, like, yeah, storytelling. I like I like the storytelling. Yeah, you you love storytelling in in lyrics especially, and this this was a cool story, especially because I mean it had characters, you know, they were diff- it wasn't all from one perspective and like the perspectives changed and it was like a narrative. Yeah. And even like when there was this line about the shadows dancing on the wall, um, it also gave me this image that the story was told maybe also like depicting the characters on the wall and you know yeah. <laughs> With the puppets and Yeah the the puppets and yeah. um yeah. Yeah, I, I got that that sense as well, which also is a very fitting theme because it's, you know, someone playing a puppet show for people to mislead them, to tell them these fictitious stories. And yeah, that's why I think the video would be really good for, for this song. Yeah, they could make a very good video for us. Okay, I, I spoke too much. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have anything else to add? I got, I got carried away. <laughs> no, I think you covered pretty much everything. Well, Boris, good choice. Yeah, thank you. Um, Yeah, and we'll see you guys soon. Thank you for watching.